What's up everybody? I'm out here working in the garden. I realized I forgot to bring out my microphone, but I think you guys should be able to hear me okay. I'm starting to get my rows in, in this garden. I'm planting all the things that <clears throat> are from seed so they can get a good head start. And I've got a lot of stuff in already, but I am not even halfway through. So it's, it's a lot of work. I'm, you know, trying to get out all the weeds as I go. And I realized I don't have any more beet seeds. I had so many, but now I don't have any. So I'm going to have to pick up some of those. But I, <clears throat> we know I'm doing the victory garden. And I've kind of readjusted some of the rows to make more sense for the things that I'm growing. So the first row I did, um, I stuck with a black turtle and a pinto bean because those are going to be my soup beans, you know, long-term storage dry beans. Those will be a one row and done. We don't go through a super ton of those. And put in, um, I have a row set for late carrots. So when I pick those beans, the carrots will go in. Uh, I put in a row of lettuce and beans. So half a row. Um, my pink celery isn't quite ready to go out yet or else I'd stick it out, but it's not ready yet. But I picked up and took one of the markers out and decided I wasn't going to put it so close because I still want to do the tomatoes with the tea posts, I've decided, because I planted so many. If I hadn't planted that many, it wouldn't be a problem, but we're going to do that. But what I decided to do is since this is a victory garden, I'm going to companion plant. So certain things like spinach and lettuce will bolt in the summer before they really have a chance to you know, produce for a very long time. So what I did was I planted the spinach and carrots with this row right where I'm gonna plant my tomatoes. So it's like right on the front of where I'll plant my tomatoes. So as the tomato grows, it's gonna provide some shade for the spinach. I'm gonna play around with it. I'm gonna see how it goes. Worst comes to worst, it doesn't do really good and I've learned a lesson. Uh, but the next row I did the same thing. I'm doing lettuce and beets, which of course I need to go get my beet seeds, but I'll do those with the tomatoes. And then I got in some Bright Lights chard and some more bush beans. And I'm just moving along. Now I have to put in some um, lettuce and carrots, some more of those. Go through a lot of carrots and that's because I can a lot of carrots. So I told you guys yesterday that I was going to show you what I was gifted. And I don't really have a good place to do that in here. However, um, the guy down the road, a gentleman I've known for a very long time, he stopped by and he gave me this box. I don't know if you can see it, but it says um, Henry Field Seed and Nursery on it. And let me show you what's inside. Okay, I'll show you guys what's inside of this. Um, and I really thought it was older than it is but I'm estimating that this is approximately from the early 70s. So not quite as old as I thought, but from several different seed companies. And the cool thing is most of these seed companies are still in existence today. One of them was taken over by Gurney's, I think. Uh, but this is, check these out. Beef steak tomatoes. This is a sugar baby watermelon. Um, Fields 4th of July watermelon. Never heard of that one before. Let me know if you guys have heard of these varieties before. This is the same 4th of July. Uh, another sugar baby. Uh, Hale's Best. Now these I've grown before. Not with any success, of course. But yeah, just look at these cool old seed packets. I just love the graphics on these. Um, a Honey Rock melon. We got more Hell's Best here. Yeah, three more Hell's Best cantaloupes. I think this is your favorite. I'm gonna put this down here real quick. I think this yeah. is your favorite. I think this is cool. So this is from R. H. Shumway oh, Seedsman. Okay. I think this is the. I think it was the Henry Field that turned into um, Gurney's. I'm not. I'll have to correct myself if I'm wrong here, but. This is from R.H. Shumway Seedsman in Illinois, and they were established in 1870, so it's really, really cool. I do think that um, they're still operational today, um, but I just love, look how much detail are on these seed packets. I think that is so cool. 
Uh, this one is a Tiny Tim Midget Tomato, and I looked that up. It's a micro dwarf. So we all think that these micro dwarf tomatoes are a new thing, but this guy is not. Obviously, it's an old one. He only gets to be 12 to 18 inches tall, and the fruits are very heavy, but less than an inch in diameter. So really cool. I have more uh, sugar rock or honey rock melons. Oop. California Wonder Peppers. Here is something I haven't heard of before. This is a watermelon called a Dixie Queen. So let me know if you guys have heard of any of these. More California Wonder Peppers. I got a Rutgers tomato. I actually am growing some of those right now. More Rutgers. We're getting to the end here. Another uh, Sugar Rock melon. A Dixie Queen watermelon again. Let me see. Oh, this is a midget musk melon. So that one's different. I like musk melons. They're kind of like honeydews. And this one is different. This is a watermelon called ice cream. So, and there's nothing in this packet, but I thought it was really cool. It was called the uh, Little Marvel Peas. And this was quite a large packet. So I just love you know, looking at these and seeing all the information that's on them. RC packets don't give us half that much right now. You know, um, that's about it that was in here. There's just a lot of like, uh, like old uh, ads, if you will. Not really catalogs, but just the old ads, which are really, really cool to look through. And oh, little drill bits. I thought this was pretty neat to look at. There is a Troy built pamphlet in here for a rototiller. There it is. Oh yeah, pretty fascinating, right? There's the back side of it. Look at that, he's tilling up his corn. <laughs> That's a lot of tilling. Um, also, I thought it, I just, you know, as a, as a really cool thing, this was the old uh, order and it's, you know, filled out and marked off, sent back. Yeah, that was from 75 in our little town of Leechburg. So really, really cool. Some of these seed packets said as early as 72. So they're, again, they're not as old as I thought they might be when I first saw them. But I think I am going to try to grow a few of these varieties that I've not heard of before. And see, I'm just gonna try like one or two and see if I can get them to grow because I want to experience them. And if it works out good, then I will try to seed save and maybe even offer them to you guys later on. So the ones that I'm thinking I'm going to try to grow are the Dixie Queen watermelon, the Fields 4th of July watermelon. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a little coughing fit there. Um, I am really pretty much over the cold that I've had. It wasn't bad at all. But once in a while I get like a little pinch and it just drives me crazy. It makes my eye water, it makes me cough. Anyway. So yeah, we were going over the, the varieties that I'm going to try to grow. So the Dixie Queen ice cream and Fields 4th of July watermelons. We're gonna try those ones. And I'm going to try the Midget Musk Melon and the Tiny Tim Midget Tomato because I think it is so cute. So we'll see what happens. They seem like there wasn't any water damage to them. So. I mean, as long as they weren't kept in extreme heat, I don't see why they shouldn't germinate. Oh my gosh, these tomato seeds are so itty bitty. I don't know if you guys can see how small they are. I mean, if they're coming out of something called a tiny tin. Can you see? I'm, I'm excited. I just want to try them to see what they're like. This, this tiny Tim would be fantastic for like a container garden on your deck, someplace, even in your windowsill, it says on it. Um, so if you don't have a lot of space, this would be an, a great option for you. I am just so excited when I get stuff like this. I know most people probably would have just 
pitched it, not give it a second thought. But um, between my love of antiques and my love of gardening, I guess it was just a natural progression <laughs> that he brought this to me. He said, most people would have just thrown it away, but I think you would actually try to do something with it. So let me know if you guys have had, you know, crusty, wonderful old things given to you and what you've done with them in the past, because I just don't think there's anything more enjoyable than getting something really old and then using it. Okay, so back out into the garden and I'm taking a break from planting seeds because I have these giant tomatillo plants that need to go into the ground. So I have a perfect spot here for them and I'm just gonna put them in. I'm putting these in my one raised bed and if I need to do two rows of them, I will, but we'll see how far I get. Okay, so I'm pretty much done out here for right now. I watered in these rows that I got done. I need to go buy more seeds. Oh, I also put some sunset runner beans here at my trellis. And I have a lot more I need to sow. But I'm off to a really good start. We did get the tomatillos are in. And I put a little bit of lemon basil over there in that last row. So we're off to a really good start feels so good to get stuff planted in the ground. Oh, let me give you an update on the stuff that I planted in the high tunnel as a test. Are you guys okay? Oh, let me dust me off in there. The wind's terrible. Okay, so day one, these are the cabbage in the, the amended bed. And these are the kale. In the amended bed so everybody's looking good it's kind of hot right now so that might be why that one looks a little wimpy but look at our lettuce our one yeah our one lettuce mm. all right hold on i'll take you over here interestingly enough this soil that wasn't amended the tomatoes are looking a little they're okay and they were smaller than the others but they look a little puny but down here the soil that came from the bank these tomatoes are looking fantastic. Same with those ones and those ones down there. Now, get creative with me because I wanna figure out how that I can trellis my tomatoes using these rails. I'm thinking about stringing a piece of wood across higher, like using self tappers here, because that would come straight down here. And then another one over here that I can go down with. This way I can vertically trellis my tomato. If I do it that way, then I should be able to drop a line down and clip them the whole way up. <sighs> should work. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do is get the self tappers and go across with a stringer, you know, two on each side. I think that should do, but so far so good. The mushroom compost seems to be doing really, really good over there. Those plants look fantastic. So, so far so good. One more thing before I sign off. It um, was brought to my attention from watching a video from Homestead Heart, whom I love. If you guys haven't checked them out, I highly suggest. They lost their entire bell pepper crop. They started them from seed. They, they plant a ton of bell peppers and they lost their entire crop. And they lost also their blueberries and they deducted that the reason is because of the uh, black cow soil that you can get uh, in the bag. They've used it many times before, but they think they got a batch that just didn't break down, so it smelled like ammonia. If you guys are gonna amend your beds with anything like that, not that it's a bad product, but maybe just a bad batch, make sure you smell it before you plant things in it because you will just burn your seedlings and they will just shrivel up and die. So make sure, you know, if you're using any type of compost product like that, any kind of cow manure product like that, smell it, make sure it's not ammonia -y, ammonia, -y, ammonia -y. <laughs> and make sure it smells like dirt because you don't want to toast all of your plants. My thoughts are definitely with them. And if I was closer, I would definitely give them some of my pepper plants, but they're much more ahead of me because they're in Georgia. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely not close, but just make sure you're checking your soils and things like that. It's terribly unfortunate when that happens. That's why I'm doing the test run with a couple plants here and there and those 
beds that are in the high tunnel just because I don't want to lose everything that I've worked really, really hard for. So, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you're dyeing your hair, they say you should do a test run first to make sure that, you know, you don't have an allergic reaction. I don't know. I don't dye my hair anymore. I love to be all gray. I used to dye it black. Anyways, okay. that's going to do it for today, guys. I'm going to go in. I'm going to make dinner. Gonna We're going to give Jade a bath real quick. And we'll do it all again tomorrow. Yep. So we hope you have a great day. We'll see, see you tomorrow. in the next one. Bye. Bye.